Hello friends, welcome to the Decide Network. Today we are going to talk about child rearing practices. And for this discussion, we have with us in the studio Dr. Neelima Asthana, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, University of Delhi. And I would also like to tell you that her research interests include special education, developmental issues of the child, philosophy of education and teacher education. And as I already mentioned, today she will talk about child rearing practices. And with this, I welcome her to our EduSight network and uh, request her to begin the lecture. Thank you, Rishi. Actually, I am teaching at Lady Irwin College, Department of Education. It comes under University of Delhi. So, today the topic is child rearing practices or parenting style. It is a very interesting topic uh, for everyone actually, uh, those who are learning and those who are not learning even. The child rearing practices, uh, the topic is in, of interest of everyone. We want to uh, discuss the topic, actually the discuss the issue to create wonderful kids. Uh, as you can see, from a frowning kid to a smiling kid. So basically, child rearing practices. What is child rearing practices? Child rearing is the training or bringing up of children by parents or parent substitute. Uh, Parent substitutes, sometimes uh, pa both the parents you, uh, keep themselves busy in the work or um, due to some reasons child uh, uh, is not living with parents, some uh, one else for example grandparents or sub, uh, some caregiver is taking care of the child. Then it is important for everyone to know the um, pattern how to bring up the child. So, it is not just the basic food, shelter, clothing triad that keeps children alive. For uh, It is uh, not only giving food to the child or giving the child a good shelter, comfortable environment or uh, clothing, nice clothing. Anybody can give that these three things, but child rearing is something, uh, it includes that. Uh, also, but it is something else also. So, it is not just only basic food, shelter and clothing. It is also the active molding of character, personality, talents and emotional and physical well-being of the child. Uh, as you can see personality, talents, emotional and physical well-being, these are all, these all are the psychological aspect of the development of a child. Uh, in our previous lectures, you come to know about um, different developments like physical, social, emotional, intellectual development. So, child rearing uh, is uh, important to um, develop the child uh, in a holistic manner. So, uh, uh, keeping in mind all these issues, it is important to understand the various child rearing practices prevalent in the society. Child rearing practices also influence childhood and adolescence behavior and the way these children become parents as adults. Uh, the way the child is uh, being reared during early stage is uh, uh, also it is reflected in the later stage also. Uh, uh, the behavior of, a, of an adolescent or uh, behavior of a parent or behavior of a um, person in an occupation, occupation everything is uh, due to the practices through which child has undergone during his or her early stages. So, child rearing practices also influence childhood, adolescence and the when the individual becomes the parent. Child rearing practices are grounded in the cultural patterns and belief that is why it is said uh, that child rearing is uh, closely um, related to culture. All the cultural beliefs and practices uh, in a way influence the child rearing practices. For example, a person who is living in a tribal area rears his or her child in a different manner than in a urban area. 
in the sa same manner a child who is living in uh, in a region which is dominated by uh, it which is rich in cultural uh, beliefs and uh, uh, interest the child will be having different kind of orientation for example if you find a child interested in uh, learning dance or learning music or uh, learning different languages naturally the culture of that particular region <coughs> influences the child rearing practices so uh, it is a very important factor culture is a very important factor which affects the child rearing practices Thus, uh, thus, the child rearing practices include activities which guarantee the child's physical well, well being, keeping the child safe and free from harm. Physical well being includes the nutritional needs of the child, um, keeping the child safe, giving the child comfortable environment. So, this is the duty of the parent or the parent substitute to give the child right kind of nutrition, right kind of environment, right kind of uh, uh, secured environment and it does not uh, affect by the financial well being of an individual of a, or a family. It can be given in any kind of environment, uh, environment whether the, uh, the family has uh, some means or is very rich, very affluent. A child could be reared very well in any kind of family provided the parents should be well aware of the right kind of child rearing practices. Providing shelter, shelter and clothing, preventing and attending to illness, it is also important because you can see a crash or a daycare center where you uh, one uh, leave the child uh, leave the child when uh, parents go for their work, but they do not know what is happening to the child because they pay money and they expect right kind of treatment to their child. But as we all know, a child a very small child cannot speak up about himself or herself. So, the child will not be able to tell uh, uh, everything about his comfort or um, the way he is being treated in the child care center. So, uh, it is the uh, duty of the caregiver to give right kind of um, shelter and environment to the child and in, for that it is important to have a right kind of attitude towards the children. And it is sometimes not possible for everyone or anyone to uh, take care of a child. Promote, uh, the uh, promotion of child's psychosocial well-being is also very important. For example, we, uh, we are having children at home, we are treating them well, but, uh, we are giving them all uh, good food, good clothes, good shelter but we are not able to take care of their emotional needs or social needs. In that way, the child will be, will feel comfortable, but will uh, definitely uh, lack of some kind of these uh, needs. Then providing emotional security, socialization, nurturing and giving affection. Socialization is very important. In that case, it is not only parents who can socialize the child at home, uh, only at home. They need to take the child outside the community, uh, allow the child to meet, the fr meet his or her friends, to go to different families, to provide uh, the child right kind of social environment. In that, in that way, parents can provide the child emotional security, social security, socialization, uh, uh, scope of socialization and they can give affection also. Then uh, child rearing practices also include support, uh, supporting the child's physical development, feeding, bathing, providing safe places to play and explore, promote the child's mental development, interaction, stimulation and play. The child intellectual development, it is fine that it depends on the in, IQ of the child, but uh, again the child, child's cognitive development takes place when the child gets right kind of environment to interact, uh, gets stimulated, uh, getting uh, by getting stimulated environment and uh, activities related to play. 
then facilitating the child's interaction with others outside the home, within the community, at health clinics, at school, etc. And this is the duty of the parents to provide these kind of uh, uh, opportunities to the child. Then I come to the different types of child rearing practices. As I started with the notion that it is a very difficult task, not a very easy task. If we want to raise a, ch raise a happy child, then definitely a uh, specific child rearing practice is required. But all the parents are not able to give the right kind of environment to the child. So there are different types of child rearing practices. And these child rearing practices are combinations of parenting behaviors that occur in a wide range of situations, creating an enduring child rearing climate. It is important to develop an emotional connection with the child which is possible by acceptance of the child. An emotional bonding uh, develops only when the child, uh, when the caregiver is sensitive towards the child's need. Then to develop confidence in a child's Another aspect of child rearing, it is possible by granting autonomy to the child which further encourages self-reliance. Following are the uh, following uh, few common child rearing practices. So for uh, right kind of um, child rearing practices, it is important to take care of the confidence building of the child as well as the uh, uh, um, and confidence building is possible only when we give right kind of autonomy to the child along with some kind of restriction. Now the various child rearing practices are um, as given by Bomberind, there are four uh, child rearing practices, authoritarian, authoritative, permissive and uninvolved. Now I will discuss the different child rearing practices uh, individually. The authoritarian style is low in acceptance and involvement, means the uh, caregiver or the parents uh, accept the child, but it is not that wholehearted whole acceptance as well as involvement with the child. Authoritarian style is also high in coercive control and low in autonomy granting. So always the parent wants to keep the child uh, in his or her own uh, control. They keep a watch on each and every moment of the child and uh, it is also uh, a ki kind of uh, uh, they uh, provide, uh, they give a punishing environment to the child. They always keep a control, keep, uh, give stress to the child and uh, punish the child for uh, small mistakes also. Parents place importance to obedience. They always want that their uh, instructions, their uh, action should be obeyed by the child. They just keep an eye on the child, they want a very disciplined kind of child. They can say that to get up at 6, go for a walk or a exercise, come, take bath, go for study. So a very tight schedule uh, sometimes they uh, create for a child and in that schedule they feel, they want the child uh, should obey each and every instruction of uh, them. It is less in sensitivity to the individual child or circumstances. They are, uh, we can say the uh, caregiver or the parents are least sensitive towards the needs of the children. They just do not want to understand the feeling of the child. Whatever is good, whatever is uh, correct, is uh, correct due to them. So they feel that each and every aspect of uh, their own behavior should be uh, taken by the child and child should behave exactly the way they like. Also the authoritarian style is high in controlling children's behavior through constant direction, criticism, threatening and swift consequences. So uh, it is, uh, we can say it is a very much behavioristic kind of uh, training of a child where we want to 
control the behavior of the child, we want to make the child like a machine and uh, in uh, the process of making that machine a perfect machine, we want the child to follow the direction. Uh, in that uh, uh, process, uh, parents continuously criticize their child in front of their friends, in front of their child's uh, friends or in front of their teachers. So, they feel that their criticism will be useful for the child, will be constructive for the child, but it does not happen. It is um, it is always a, have a very negative kind of uh, uh, impact on the child's mind. The child feels that he is uh, or she is being criticized always in front of the uh, important people of their life and they feel uh, they develop a kind of uh, disrespect for their parents as well as uh, very so, uh, low self esteem for themselves. So, they uh, give them direction, they give, they criticize them, uh, they threaten them. What simple example is that if you eat it, police will come. If you do this homework quickly, you will have to get to the teacher. So, these kind of behavior uh, are very uh, common when we in this type of child rearing practices and they also threaten the child by giving them the, uh, by telling them the consequences of their behavior. So, we can say it is a very behavioristic kind of uh, attitude of the parents and they want to make a child, uh, make their child a perfect machine in that sense. Machine in, uh, machine or you can say a computer where you are feeding something good and you feel that everything good will be the output. The authoritarian parent is tend to be cold and rejecting, frequently degrade their child by mocking and putting him down, make decisions for their child and expect them to accept their words unquestioningly, resort to force and punishment. When we talk about the decision, the, for example, if the child is small, young, six, seven years old, the child will be will be happy to uh, wear the cl clothes the way the parents would like to uh, clothe them. But later on, when the child develops his or her own uh, liking for something, for clothes or shoes or any gadget, even then, if the parents uh, impose their uh, feelings and their choice on the child, then it becomes very difficult for the child to resist. And if the child is, uh, if the parent is authoritarian, it is very difficult to, to for the child to uh, give to give the logic to their parents to ex uh, for the um, things which he or she doesn't like. The authoritarian parent also enforce rigid adherence to rules regardless of whether those expectations are realistic. For example, they feel that a young child 6 or 7 years old uh, should do better, should do, should learn more uh, and uh, more than what is required at that particular stage because we all know that uh, as we come to know in during uh, while we study about cognitive development, there are different stages of development and at each stage child learns uh, a specific content, but parents feel that the child should be able to learn more of more than what is required at that particular stage. For example, if the child is able to add two, two digits number at class 4, the parent would like the child should learn more than that. And in that way, the, they always uh, expect the teachers to give more work to the child and uh, always they inquire from teacher that whether their child is uh, able to learn better or not. So, it becomes very difficult for the child to adhere to the expectations of the uh, parents. They try to control the child psychologically also, which hampers child verbal expression, individuality and attachment to parents. For example, if the child is always uh, punished for uh, something and the parent feel that it is not sufficient, the child should be able to learn more, then it uh, affects the child's verbal expression also. The child does, will not be able to express the needs verbally and uh, very uh, verbally very well. So, it uh, hampers the individuality of the child as well as the attachment of the child to the parents. 
it suppresses the child's ideas, originality, decisions and choice of making friends. So, we can say the creativity of the child, uh, parents themselves, themselves skill the creativity of the child, the ideas, they just do not do not like the child to do something on his or her own. The uh, originality of ideas is killed and they, the child in, uh, at times is not uh, is facing difficulty in making friends of his or her own choice. They hold very high expectations from the child which may not be appropriate. So, authoritarian parenting could result in making the child less warm and responsive, distrustful of others, poorer peer relations, unhappy with themselves, have poor adjustment and lower school achievement. So, uh, uh, it becomes uh, very much horrible for the child when the child is not able to perform well at studies or is not able to make friends on his or her own and the child always feel unhappy with himself or herself. So, uh, it could be said that authoritarian parenting style is very um, uh, difficult for the child and it is uh, not good for the child proper growth and development. The next is authoritative approach, both the terms are very much similar authoritarian and authoritative, but the meaning is very much opposite. The authoritative approach allows the child to express their feelings, thoughts and desires. It is, we can say it is a natural kind of parenting when the child is free to express his or her feeling, thoughts and ideas. Parents always encourage the child, they sit together, they resolve the issues together and if there is any disagreement, they uh, solve the problem through discussion. In, a, in this uh, situation, uh, parents and child, both of them can are able to uh, create or initiate dialogue between them and whenever there is dialogue and a meaningful dialogue, it is always helpful in uh, removing the doubts, in uh, solving the problems, in solving the situations and in uh, motivating the children. So, uh, when they are dialogue, they are having dialogue, they can express their feelings freely and in that sense, in that way creativity could be maintained or could be enhanced of the child. It is considered the gold standard and typically produces independent and confident children who are well adjusted, creative and cooperative. Cooperative because when the parents are free and they are able to discuss with their parents the different issues, they are, uh, they can express their feelings. If they are uh, happy to learn something, for example, at times people, uh, parents also force the child to learn a uh, specific art. For example, for girls, it is always uh, decided by the parents that the, their daughter should go to learn Kathak, whether she is interested or not or any uh, traditional or uh, uh, traditional dance. If the child is interested in some western dance, they feel that it is not good for the child, the girl, she should learn Kathak. But if the parent is authoritative, they discuss together, the child can express their, uh, his or her feeling, his or her interest and the uh, way, in that uh, way the child will be given, could be given the right kind of environment. So, it is a goal, uh, we can say it is a gold standard where we can develop uh, an independent, confident child who is well adjusted, creative and cooperative. It emphasizes warmth and responsiveness to children's need, but parents also maintain high behavioral expectations. So, warmth is there both sides the ch child uh, is having very uh, good feelings for their parents as well as the parents used to have good feeling for towards their child. But in that situation, parents also maintain high behavioral expectations from their children. They, right from the beginning, 
they try to give moral uh, values to their children and they feel that, that those moral values should be reflected in the child's behavior. But in this case, the uh, parent should be uh, sensitive towards the uh, uh, needs, age needs of the child. They should be, uh, they should be preached not uh, according to their age. If they are uh, being told always that you should do this, you should do that, you should obey rules, you should uh, respect elderly, so it is fine, they will do that. But it is not the, the thing should not be continuously uh, imposed on the children. So, authoritative style is the most successful approach and involves high expectance uh, and involvement adaptive control techniques and appropriate autonomy granting. If we compare authoritative versus, versus authoritarian control, we can say that authoritarian is uh, controlling both psychological and behavior, behavioral while there is balance in the authoritative style. If we are giving freedom to the child, then it is with some control also. So, and if the uh, parents as well as children maintain that type of balance in their behavior. Authoritative parents are thus warm, attentive and sensitive to the child's needs. Try to set limits and allow natural consequences as a means of modifying child's behavior. They are sensitive to their child's point of view and temperament. They may adjust consequences or expectations accordingly. So, they, uh, they are parents are warm, attentive and sensitive. They always uh, sense the child's need. If the child is interested in learning guitar, they will try to create an environment in which child will be able to learn that kind of uh, talent. But for giving the right kind of choice, first it is the duty of the parent to give them the right kind of environment. They should be, the child should be exposed to different kind of um, activities which he or she can learn. And in that way, the, the parents try to set limits and allow natural consequences. They uh, give freedom to the child and set limits also. And in that way, they try to modify the behavior. And modification is of behavior is not through the direction or instructions. It is through the uh, natural guidance by the parents by giving the uh, by giving the child the right kind of environment. Always, they are sensitive to the child's point of view. For example, if the child is interested in some kind of um, the child is willing to go outside for with uh, the friends. The parent should uh, not always stop the child, but if the parents feel that the child should not go with those uh, people, then they can give the logic of um, stopping the child for not going. So they may adjust consequences or expectations accordingly. Parents explain why certain rules are important rather than citing their authority as the reason why children should obey those. The rules are there, but logic is also there. For example, uh, the child is asked to study uh, certain uh, language during class 6th or 7th. Uh, for example, some uh, language which, which are important, which, are, which will be useful in future. So, the logic could be given to the child and the child will be able to create interest in that field. The parents uh, create enjoy, enjoyable and relaxed environment at home and develop emotionally fulfilling parent child relationship. So, you, uh, you can sense the environment of the family when uh, there will be no uh, uh, hesitation there uh, everybody is talking freely to each other they are playing together they are eating together they are enjoying together going out together so in that way we can say that environment home environment is good and child the child will be happy is happy in that environment we can say without uh, living in that environment for 2 3 hours we can just say by uh, looking at that that the child is getting right kind of environment and parent develop, uh, parents develop a close bonding with the child. 
uh, close bonding means every time the parent will feel some uh, emotions for the child and child will always feel about or think about their parents. So, there, uh, there is a close bonding between parent and children. At the same time, exercise firm and reasonable control and explain to them their expectations. Parents also use disciplinary encounters as teaching moments to promote the child's self-regulation and monitor the child's whereabouts and activities. Self-regulation means we just do not discipline the child by um, punishing the child or by uh, instructing the child, it is the self-regulation. And when there is self-regulation, we can easily monitor the activities and uh, child's whereabouts. So, uh, in that environment, the child will themselves tell about his or her own um, needs and will tell about going out with friends, where the child is going out, everything will be told to the parents. They gradually provide autonomy to the child to allow the child to take own decisions in areas where she or he is ready to make choices as a result of development. And uh, most of the parents during adolescence period are very much concerned about their children. They, they all feel that the child should have a very good career and a very good future and th for that they sometimes impose their own uh, likings and dislikings on the child. They impose a restriction on the child and they, they try the, to give right kind of coaching to the child. And if uh, we uh, ask the child, he or she will say that, I am not interested in this uh, uh, vocation, but my parents are interested, so I am here. But, I, but the, later on, the um, parents will f find that the child is even not doing well at studies. So, it is important to understand the child and allow the child to take their own decisions in the areas where she or he is ready to make choices as a result of development. So, authoritative parenting could result a child, a happy child, self-reliant child, self-controlled child, contented, friendly and generous child, cooperative, high achiever, less likely to be seriously disruptive or delinquent. So, in a way we can say it is a very good parenting style where we have some, we can give, we give freedom to the child as well as uh, restrict the child logically. The third style is uh, permissive style. Permissive as the name suggests, permissive means give uh, all the freedom to the child, permission for everything. So, permissive style of parenting is warm and accepting but uninvolved. They, they can give all the freedom to the child. Uh, keeping the, uh, themselves away. There could be so many reasons for this kind of style. If the parents are uh, very much busy or uh, having their own social life, they always try to live their own li uh, they always try to have their own separate life from the child. So, uh, in this case, they just do not give much attention to the child's need and they just give all the freedom to the child give all the facili facilities to the child, but just do not impose any restriction, they just do not uh, impose or control the child, they just do not give any logic to anything, just uh, all the facilities are there and it happens in most, uh, in cases where the, the family is very much affluent or the family is very much poor, because, uh, because in an affluent family, the, there is so much of money. The child, the parents can give all the facilities to, ch to the child, all the comforts to the child and give uh, money like anything, but they do not give the child, they cannot give the child their precious time. So, th that is one uh, type of uh, uh, environment or one type of situation. The other is when there is very much, um, the background is very poor. The, uh, they are not having enough money to fend themselves. So, in that case also parents uh, make the child free to go and on. So, both the, in both the cases we find permissive style of par parenting. It is warm and accepting but uninvolved. It involves lots of love, support and sensitivity. 
does not emphasize on rigid framing of rules, gives sufficient freedom to children to do as they like. So, instructions are not included. A child can uh, keep their parents shut also, they just do not like to listen to their parents. They say that when you are not here, uh, when you do not wish to give your uh, emotional and social support, then they, you do not have any right to control me. They can shout at their parents also. So, this kind of uh, attitude in the uh, develop in the child. Permissive parents have few expectations and make few demands from child. Do not keep an eye always on their children. Do not enforce rules. Instead of giving gradual autonomy, give them sufficient freedom to make many decision, decisions on their own without considering their maturity level. So, uh, the child gets freedom, the, the, the child needs, uh, if the child needs money, money, he can ask from, he or she can ask from, for this and they always get it. And in this uh, case, both the parents and the children are confused. They just do not know what to do after a certain point, after a specific point of time when they feel that things, situation is out of their control. So, it is a very confusing situation. Permissive parenting uh, could result in immature immaturities which is reflected in child's decision and behavior which harm them and make them confused. Children become aggressive, less, least self-reliant, least self-controlled, least exploratory and most unhappy. In that case, child is not at all creative, not at all happy because he is not able, he or she is not able to cope up with the demands at school. So, uh, that uh, situation makes them aggressive also self-reliant, self-controlled and unhappy. Should I please? Then uh, the next style or last style which is very much unpopular is uninvolved style. Combines low acceptance and involvement with little control and general indifference to issue of auto autonomy. Uh, here the child uh, it is very much uh, similar to permissive uh, style, but in permissive style, the parents are involved to some extent, but in uninvolved style, the parents are not at all interested in child's welfare. And this is the most harmful uh, situation for children. Parental warmth and responsiveness is absent here. Uh, parents are there, but they are uh, having their something, their own agenda. There could be so many reasons of this uninvolvement. It could be due to the um, relationship, uh, bad relationship of their parents or uh, due to single parent upbringing or uh, uh, something not happening well at uh, office or at occupation uh, front. So, there could be so many reasons of uninvolvement of the parents or the parents have got this kind of uh, situation in their, ch uh, at their childhood stage. Uninvolved parents place few expectations and demands on the child, are often emotionally detached and depressed, are so much stressed so as to find very little time and energy for children, may be stressed due to work outside home or related to spouse or family. They may fulfill the child's immediate needs but fail to find solutions or make strategies to fulfill long term goals. As a result, they are not able to give attention to child studies, homework, school related work, social behavior do not listen to child's point of view and they do not provide guidance for appropriate career choices and monitoring child's whereabouts and activities. You can say that it is a situation like the child is in the family because he's, uh, he or she is, uh, has taken birth in that family. 
his basic demands demands are being fulfilled by the parents or the caregiver in most of the cases caregiver but nothing more so uh, it is a very dangerous situation for the child from the child's point of view and the parents do not provide guidance for appropriate career choices even so child's uh, child find, finds very much difficult time while settling in the career also so these are a few visuals where you can see a depressed child parents are fighting in front of the child and uh, our uh, child is left free as parents are busy in their own agenda so is there a perfect style of parenting everybody asked about asked about that if there is a perfect style of parenting we want to make a perfect child there are so many people or you can say there are different roles being played by a mother so which is the style we can say the most effective style is authoritative style because it promotes parents pleasure and approval of the child a sense of self efficacy a child at child rearing and a likelihood of continuing to be authoritative parents of well adjusted children are authoritative because their children are cooperative children characteristics do contribute to the ease with which parents can apply the authoritative style warmth and firm control succeed in modifying children's maladaptive style and you can say it is a circle when parents are uh, giving warmth children are getting warmth and in uh, in uh, return they are giving warmth to the parent if parents are cooperative they are giving the right kind right direction to the child and to follow the uh, that direction child becomes cooperative so it is a circle or it is a give and take process when you are giving right kind of values you are getting right kind of output also so it promotes maturity and adjustment in children of diverse temperaments children seem to view the affection appropriate control and respect for self determination as well as intentioned parental effort to increase their competence as a children as a result children start responding with cooperation and maturity and in a way we can make a very happy family when both children and parents are mutually uh, giving and taking to each other or respecting each other and it uh, it is the situation which uh, very uh, which happens in the family but uh, you cannot say that uh, only in though in all the families on only this authoritative style is being followed because when parents feel that um, they are having some problems some confusion some doubts then they start behaving in a different manner also but to a larger extent if a family is adopting authoritative style they can raise a very good child they can uh, have a mutually cooperative and understanding environment at home now i will uh, i would like to show you a short clip it will sum up the things which we just discussed strict set of rules. The parent can appear very hostile towards the child. Parents who use this authoritarian style are usually harsh and rigid in their discipline and use power assertive methods of control, such as verbal abuse or smacking. This parental behaviour can be very destructive for the child and can lead to the child becoming antisocial and fearful of their home environment. Forcing a child into submission can crush a child's spirit and make them mistrustful of others. These children are more likely to have low social competence and self-reliance. The child may even suffer mental health issues if they receive this form of parenting over the course of many years. Uninvolved parenting is a very laid-back style, where the parents let the children do what they want and allow them to learn from their own experiences. Although this style encourages children to become more active and independent, it can become neglectful 
if the parent fails to respond to the child's basic needs. Unwell parents tend to focus on their own needs and will give these a higher priority than their child's needs. This lack of an involved parental figure can lead to the child finding it hard to form relationships with others and sustain relationships over time. These children are also the most likely to have poorer school achievements and higher rates of problem behaviour. Permissive parenting is a mix of authoritarian and uninvolved parenting, where the parent is very inconsistent with their behaviour. The parents may be harsh and demanding one day and uninvolved and neglectful the next. They will not set expectations for the child to live up to or demand the same level of achievement. This parenting style is very confusing to the child. Giving the child this amount of freedom can cause them to go out of control. They become uncontrollable and impulsive. A strong child who has grown up with few rules and restraints can grow up to be very hard to pacify and manage. They will often express their impulses freely and are somewhat more immature than their peers, being less likely to take on responsibility and independent tasks. As you can see, authoritarian, uninvolved and permissive parenting styles all have some negative consequences for the child's well-being. The long-term effects of these parenting styles can be damaging for the child. Fortunately, there is one parenting style that has a more positive outcome for children and parents. The authoritative style is a much more positive parenting style, where the parent uses a responsive and involved approach to the child's well-being. This parenting style is unique in that the parent will listen to their point of view and take it into account. Parents who show authoritative parenting allow their child freedom, but have consistent rules and boundaries for the child, giving them a structured and secure environment to develop and flourish in. The parents will set high standards of behaviour and achievement for their child, and will be warm and supportive in helping their child reach these expectations. This responsive approach to the child's needs leads to self-confident, socially competent children who have high self-esteem and are more likely to have good school grades. These children will have low levels of misbehaviour, psychological distress and drug abuse and will be able to form and sustain relationships over time. So, uh, alright, uh, with that I am assuming we have uh, arrived to the end of the yeah. presentation. So. Uh, Thank you so much ma'am for talking about child rearing practices and uh, with that we learnt about the four different uh, uh, practices that uh, are there for uh, child rearing and uh, we also uh, looked at certain examples with a lot of visuals in place. So with that uh, I think uh, we could ask ma'am a few questions and I should be very happy to answer. Yeah. So uh, ma'am uh, in a general sense uh, what would you suggest is ways to build confidence of the child irrespective of the child rearing practice. Say, how can the child be more confident from the very initial stages? Uh, actually, uh, as you said that uh, to build uh, for the confidence building, always parents are responsible because right. child is very small, he or she does not know about the environment. So to develop the uh, confidence in the child from the very beginning stage, we should give the uh, we should give love and support to the child. It right. is true that uh, the child needs are there, physical needs are there, but right from the beginning child's emotional and social needs are also very important. And as we discussed in our previous lessons, the different developments of the child, you, you will uh, agree with, uh, with me that it is uh, a right kind of emotional support which we give to the child right from the beginning. For example, uh, the child uh, in, when the child is in an infant, he or she feels very much satisfied in the mother's lap, yes. in the father's lap. So that is very important. The mother and father, parents should give that kind of support and protection right from the uh, beginning, right after the birth of the child. Right. If the child is accepted and um, well uh, welcome in the family, naturally the, that kind of love and affection the ch parents and other members of the family will give to the child and in a way we can build the confidence. Right. right. So ma'am as we uh, talked about the authorita authoritative style where the parent is constantly supporting the child yeah. and is uh, helping child develop the confidence but within that also is, is it not important to scold the child when a child makes a mistake? Uh, I, I will say it is not important because there are very uh, there are different ways to make the child realize his or her mistake. Uh, 
Okay. For example, if the child is uh, doing something wrong at home, for example, we need the we know the nature of the child. The child is uh, doing something disturbing the things that, uh, which are uh, being kept in a mirror or somewhere. So this is the basic nature of the child. We, if we understand that kind of nature of the child, child is basically a uh, curious creature right from the beginning. The child will go and find this thing of his or her own interests. So our uh, behavior should be very much constructive in that sense. We should create uh, a situation, an environment where the child will learn more. For example, we always ask the child not to write anything on the wall. Yes. Don't make any um, uh, scratch or something. But that the learning phase of the child and the child should be made free. There should be a place where the child can scribble on the wall because it supports the child's physical as well as right. intellectual development. So instead of punishing the child, we should give them that kind of environment to right. avoid the things. Right. But ma'am, as we can also say, perhaps uh, within our homes, we can give our child a scribbling wall. But when the child moves out of the house, yeah. he or she may want to do the same thing in another person's house. So we, how do we, or how can we at that point uh, ask the child yeah, to Yeah, for that to it is so. important to make the child realize or understand. But we all know that the, ch the small children will not understand those yes. uh, issues which yes. we... Uh, place in front of them or True. the instructions which we give to them because this is the child's nature so it is important to understand the child's nature and if we are taking the child to someone place then we should be ready to control the child accordingly <laughs> it should be for a shorter duration and uh, the yes. child should be made uh, should be given the uh, right kind of play so th we can divert the nature of the child right. in that situation. Right. Nowadays we find that uh, as compared to the previous generation, this generation's children are being more spoiled. Say uh, parents because they have lesser time, uh, they they call it quality time. They, yeah. they are in turn spoiling their children by letting them do whatever they yeah. like. But uh, I think there or there, cert there should be a certain check on the behavior. Yeah, there should be. and. I feel there is a very major thing which we are missing these days. We are just missing the company of the grandparents. Yes. So in that case, when parents are all alone, every time they are having their work and they have to pay attention to their children, in that case, they try to give the child uh, all the things the child requires. But yes. that is not good for the child. For example, yes. if we start, uh, the children uh, want to play with the mobile and all of us know that it is not a very good thing to give yes, to a mobile play. to yeah, a very young yeah. child. Even today if we give them the wooden uh, toys or the clay to manipulate their um, uh, physical movements then it is uh, good for the child right. instead of right. giving them these kind of gadgets. Right. Instead of giving them very Yeah, but it is easier to buy and give the child to in that uh, way the parents are able to secure and keep the uh, things clean at home, tidy true, at home, so true. they just uh, avoid the th yes. their headache and yes. they give that. So perhaps now what we are seeing is more of a permissive style combined with the authoritative, authoritative style yeah. that is being combined. Yeah, of yeah, course, uh, yeah. when uh, earlier we would see more of either an authority, authoritarian or an authoritative. Now we are moving towards more of permissive Permiss and uh, yeah, authoritative yeah, that styles. That is true and everywhere you will find a maid yes. in affluent families. I am not, I am talking about that because in our country the situation is not only that. The things yes. are very much different. You can see the children who are who are playing on the streets and their parents are working as labor. Yes, so, so they, they cannot their give situations time. are too yes. different and yes. in that case also we need, we should protect the child. Yes. Because those are the basic human resources. Yes. Of our those are the foundational years yeah, of a child. Yeah, yeah. So, also uh, you were talking about a certain idea where we should not tell the child about the say consequences say khana nahi khaoge to police ah. jayegi, and so on but uh, we tend to say this uh, and it happens in almost every happens, family that yeah. if you don't do this this will happen if you yeah. don't do this this will happen yeah. but is it also not a way of teaching the child that this is not right and this is uh, say this is right actually this is not the right way to teach the child consequences you cannot say because uh, 
the, there is a kind of uh, you can say uh, horror of the situation. So, we should not use that kind of uh, um, situation right. to teach the child, but uh, uh, I personally do not feel that these kind of things should happen because again we used to move towards behavioristic mode of uh, right. disciplining right. the child. Right. I am sure that all of us can relate to this, yeah, do not do yeah. this, that will happen. Yeah. If we want to make a child creative, constructive, then we need to have a very creative and constructive kind of parenting style right, also. Right, uh, definitely. So ma'am, as we draw to the close of the lecture, uh, it is unfortunate that we cannot have more of an interaction, but yeah. uh, I'm, uh, I would like to thank you for this very fruitful discussion and also wonderful presentation that we had today. So, uh, to the viewers, uh, today we talked about child rearing and its practices and I am sure that you learnt a great deal from it. So, uh, thank you for being such patient uh, listeners and viewers and uh, have a nice day.